Welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Let's shift gears to the Cleveland Cavaliers now. And I have to say, I was a little bit surprised by what I saw in opening night in Toronto. Now, I had every expectation they would win the game. Toronto's not very good. Right. They also don't have a very big, a very good inside big presence. But about halfway through the second quarter, you've got Evan Mobley with 17 points, looking like he ate some sort of aggressiveness pills in the offseason. What the heck was that? And can we expect to see that all season? Yeah, I, this is the plan. They have not hid from this. They've not run from this. They've made clear right away, like, they're going to put the ball in Evan's hands. They want to play through Evan a little bit more. They want to make him a focal point of the offense. Now, is he going to have nights like that every night? That, that's hard to say. Probably not. But, you know, 50% of the games, can he play like that? Yeah, I, I don't see any reason why not. I've maintained on the show since the start. If they are going to win a championship, he has to be their best player. It's not Donovan Mitchell. It has to be Evan Mobley. And he's starting to show glimpses in the Boston series last year, the opening night against Toronto. He's starting to show glimpses that he can be that guy. Am I imagining this, or did he look slightly more bulky? Uh, I... I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I want it so badly. Yeah, I'm like, wow. This, this is what he thicker, is. He's thicker to this me. This is who he is. He's never going to be a guy who's going to really thicken up and bulk up. No, I, I but you could add 15 pounds of muscle on that frame. Probably. It, to me, it's, yeah. it, I'd love to know what his weight is now compared to what it was last year. To me, he <clears> looks <throat> a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm overly impressed by just one game, and I'm trying not to jump out the gym. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, just wait and let the season play out before I say, okay, that leap year for Evan Mobley is here. But – you know, way to be encouraged. He even spoke about it in the post game. He said, you know, I'm trying to pick up where I left off. He talked about that last game in Boston and how it transferred over. You know, when Jared Allen was asked what did he think about uh, Mobley's performance, what caught my attention was he said how calmly he did it, right? And it seemed like it wasn't something that was chaotic or he just seemed in control the entire time, playing off ball with the ball in his hands. I look at this entire Cavs team, I think if Darius Garland can continue to build on his confidence and get himself back into game shape, we'll be okay. The funniest thing from that game, Donovan Mitchell played 28 minutes and scored 21 points. He has already scored more points than the Cleveland Browns offense. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's not funny. <laughs> one, one, one thing on Mobley real quick. He's now, you know, Boston was out Porzingis that entire season. Yeah, he was. And Toronto doesn't have the interior presence right. that he's going to see yeah. down the line. Now he has to do it. And that's not taking anything away from what he did. He was great. But now he has to do it against teams that are a little bit bigger and thicker inside. We get Anthony Davis and LeBron James here next, next week. week. So, yeah. so that'll be a very nice test. Boy, yeah. AD was nuts in their opener. Yeah. 36. He's yeah, playing. He, yeah, yeah, he is yeah. absolutely playing. All right. I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all. I think they're going to win tonight. They should. They better. But JB is going to be on the other bench yeah. and in the other locker room tonight of course Bickerstaff fired after they flamed out against the Celtics in the playoffs last year and it was pretty much the organization did all but take out a billboard in the Cleveland Plain Dealer telling their fans it was the coach they brought everybody else back but yep. him yep awkward exciting like what is tonight what do you expect uh, I th the fans will give him a nice round of applause. Detroit's not very good. The Cavs should blow him out. And, you know, I, I think JB did the job that was asked of him to do when he was here and got him as far as apparently the Cavs felt like he could take them. And now they're going to in a more offensive direction. JB is very much a defensive minded coach. I think he'll do great in Detroit. It's a young roster. He kind of has there what he had here. He has exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's sort of a mess right now, and you've got to clean it up and put it back together. I think he'll do a great job with that. It's kind of funny that it's this early in the year that he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Detroit played Indiana the other night. They opened at home, had a lead for a while, and kind of gave it away at the end. Pacers won it at the end. So they're coming in 0-1. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it, it's a good story, I think. I think the fans will applaud him and give him the ovation that really he deserves. They are not where they are today, the Cavs, without the input of J.B. Bickerstaff. They were in a bad spot when he took over. John Beeline walked off that job <clears throat> halfway through his first year and said, I'm out. It was a bad spot to be in. And J.B. really picked up the pieces and put it back together. I think for me, I think the fans will give him his due. Yeah. I think he will get a, a decent ovation. But when I look at the player side of things, I don't think the players hate J.B. Bickerstaff at all, but I do think the players will be out to prove something, even if it's just a regular, you know, 
regular game two of the regular season. I go back to some of the articles that was written towards the end of last year and the level of frustration from some players kind of seeming to be, I don't know, for lack of a better term, held back. He or, lost the locker room. Like, he definitely yeah, he lost did. the it locker felt like room. like he did. You, know, you go back to the year prior in, in the playoffs against New York, basically making it seem like this team wasn't ready enough for, for the big stage, right? Or you just hearing the stories about them being in shoot-around or in practices with no real game plan, no real agenda about how to go about things. And I think frustration started to boil over. So these are, these are the same players, and this is their opportunity yep. to be like, hey, this is how it's done. Yeah, so. I, I, I think the Cavaliers can kind of look back at the whole thing and say, this is the right way to do it. This is, this is how it was done, and we did it right. I think you hit it right on the head, Jay. When he came here, it was a five-alarm fire. This was like, we, they didn't know what direction the franchise was <clears> going <throat> in. No one, there was no stability, of, you know. That whole experiment was, was disaster. David Blatt 2.0. Yeah. What I love about having some time to cool down and let the emotions of a disappointing end of the season wilt away, JB was really the perfect man for the job. Mm -hmm. And I even think you can make an argument that he actually overachieved. He is what he is. He built the, the infrastructure that the Cavs needed, he provided. He made them a defensive team. He turned the Titanic around. Mm -hmm. He got it going in the right direction. And I think ultimately the Cavs were hoping that he could grow in to the job, and he never really did. It was obvious in the Knicks series two years ago, way over his skis. The team did not perform well. It was a disaster considering how many games they won in the regular season. Last year, he took a nice step. Even though the Celtics were playing without some key pieces, so were the Cavs. Yeah. He, it was an okay showing. You know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't better or worse than the Knicks. It just they ended up losing to the eventual champion, and I thought they played them pretty well. They did. And so for JB, my hope is he gets a chance to do in Detroit what he did in Cleveland. And I agree with both of you guys. I think he's going to get a very nice round of applause and an ovation for providing some really nice memories over his time as the Cavs head coach. As yeah. he should.